Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the propositions behind the idea of search for extraterrestrial life. And specifically some of the new studies that even suggest on how we could maybe use the James Webb Telescope to look for potential extraterrestrial intelligence. With some other studies suggesting on how we could maybe even look for this across vast distances of space, proposing several techniques. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. But let's start with the definition of what we're actually talking about. Here the idea is referred to as the techno signatures, or the signatures of various types of extraterrestrial technology that could be somehow visible and also detectable by looking at various features on those distant planets, with Dyson Sphere being the best known potential techno signature. And so obviously by detecting a certain signature from one of the stars or one of the planets somewhere out there, it would maybe help us answer the famous Fermi paradox. Where is everybody? And in the last few years, a lot of different scientists, including NASA scientists, have made quite a lot of different propositions on how we could maybe look for these techno signatures using modern technology. With a lot of these ideas combined into a single paper that you can find in the description below, focusing specifically on various opinions and various ideas from various experts in the field, with different ideas looking for different signatures across different distances. And actually distance here is really important, mostly because it's obviously a lot easier to see if there is some kind of a star structure as opposed to a simple planetary structure or even planetary formation that could indicate alien technology. And all of this is of course for one simple reason. Even today there is still no clear understanding if first of all life is common across the universe and if second of all intelligent life is common. So there is still no clear understanding if we are just very unique and very special living here on planet earth or if the other life is somewhere out there as well and we are just not seeing it yet. As a matter of fact, it's a very important question to answer because it will define our understanding of what's happening here on the planet. But in the last 30 years or so, it's actually become kind of difficult to study all of this, mostly because various telescopes, including the iconic Arecibo telescope, have actually stopped searching for extraterrestrial life or extraterrestrial intelligence. Although in the last few years, there have been a lot of new push uh, from different agencies, including NASA and a lot of NASA scientists, trying to restart this particular program and trying to see if we can find something after all. Although, spoiler alert, the last paper from SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, that was conducted using the Murchison Whitefield Array in Australia, unfortunately discovered nothing on the frequencies of about 150 MHz. With this particular study being the fourth such attempt to find something, and in a different frequency. And in this case, it once again sort of confirms that, well, it doesn't seem like there are a lot of radio signals coming from anywhere in our galaxy. And that by itself is already a mystery. Why not? On top of this, there's obviously been a lot of talk about life, extraterrestrial life, a little bit closer to home. For example, on Venus or on Mars. And it's already been suggested that we might be able to discover something a little bit sooner on, for example, Venus, specifically in the atmosphere of Venus. Now that by itself would be a big discovery and it would definitely help us understand what's potentially happening on other objects. But discovering biological simple life is not really the same. However, there's also been suggestions from other scientists that well, maybe we're going to be able to find something hiding in a solar system that was actually sent here thousands if not millions of years ago. For example, some sort of an ancient probe from one of the alien species that might have passed really close to our solar system a long time ago and decided to place some kind of a probe just to scan the system to see if it was habitable enough. Now this is obviously one of the possible places we can look for these so-called techno signatures, but that's also something that we cannot do right now, mostly because we don't even know what we're looking for. Obviously things like machine learning or artificial intelligence can help us go through a lot of data and potentially discover something, but what exactly are we going to be looking for in the solar system? Maybe it's something that's composed of something very specific, or maybe it's something in a very specific orbit, but what? And so to try to help us with this, one of the studies you can find in the description sort of came up with a bit of a framework based on a concept known as the ICHNOSCALE, which can be described as a kind of a footprint given away by a certain techno signature depending on the distance, with some techno signatures being a lot more visible than others. For example, here they propose that any major mega project should be actually visible even from across the galaxy, or maybe even in a neighboring galaxy. So if there is some kind of a type 3 civilization building something extremely large, it would be relatively easy to find. 
obviously since we haven't really found anything yet, chances are it probably doesn't exist. Then we have things like Dyson spheres that should be detectable from roughly around 3000 light years away from planet Earth. So most of the stars within that vicinity, if there are any Dyson spheres or Dyson rings around them, would most likely produce enough emissions for us to be able to see them with modern telescopes. But as of today, nothing has been definitively found yet. All of the previous detections did not have all of the necessary signatures, for example the requirements for the infrared emissions that are expected from these unusual objects. On the other hand, if there is a planet somewhere out there that possesses what's known as the exo-ring, specifically something that's known as the Clark exo-belt, and that's essentially when you have a lot of communication satellites in a very specific orbit, this also can be visible from approximately 3000 light years away from us. But if this particular alien species uses something more discreet like lasers for communication, this can even be visible from hundreds of thousands of light years away from us. So some things could be detected much easier. Once again, so far nothing has been found. But then we also come to some other more exciting things like, for example, seeing the night lights. Or in this case, city lights. This is something that could be maybe visible from about 30 light years away from us, but it would definitively tell us or show us that something out there is definitely different from other planets. The same kind of goes for relatively weak radio signals. If there's a planet somewhere out there that has a lot of radio emissions, a lot of, for example, TV shows of their own, we could only detect this from approximately 30 light years away from us. So unless these emissions are pointed directly at us, they're going to be extremely difficult to find at farther away distances. And then we have this other proposition that also connects to this other study. The study that connects all of this to the capabilities of James Webb Space Telescope. In theory, we should also be able to detect pollution, alien pollution. And in this paper, they even establish what kind of pollution would be easiest to detect and would definitively tell us that this is extraterrestrial intelligence and not something natural. So what is it? Well, first, you have to understand one thing. When we're looking at these stars and these planets, this is kind of what the scientists are going to be looking at. And somewhere in these pixels, an extremely minute change is going to indicate that there is very likely some sort of a planet here. And in that change, the scientists are going to have to look at the exact parameters of light that was detected, essentially looking at the wavelengths of light that came from this particular object. This will allow the scientists to actually possibly see through the atmosphere of this planet. So for example here if we look at the planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system, right here at the edge of the planet, the star's light is passing through the atmosphere and is being absorbed or potentially changed in some way by the molecules in the atmosphere itself. That tiny tiny detection is all the scientists are going to have and all they're going to be working with. And in this case, Several different studies have already suggested what we could maybe see coming from these distant planets using the James Webb Telescope. So for example, if there is a sudden detection of what's known as the red edge, which refers to the sudden drop that you see right here around the color red, and is actually caused by the absorption of light in this particular spectrum by something equivalent to chlorophyll, in this case, this would indicate that maybe there is some kind of a plant life or photosynthetic life on this particular planet, because that's exactly what we see from planet Earth with this particular technique being used today to study the, for example, health of different forests or distribution of chlorophyll on our own planet. And so by detecting this edge elsewhere, it would be a pretty interesting sign that maybe there's life there as well. But that would obviously not be intelligent life, and so that's why the scientists recommend looking for pollutants or pollution in general. But the thing about pollution on Earth is that, well, some of it is naturally produced, or I mean, it kind of looks like pollution. So for example, obviously things like CO2 or even nitrogen oxide, which we generally consider to be pollutants, are also naturally produced by various events and various things on Earth. But there are some pollutants that cannot be naturally produced and have never been found in nature, with one pollutant being extremely interesting to science. The series of pollutants we refer to as CFCs, also known as chlorofluorocarbons. You might already know them because these are the pollutants that have created the so-called ozone hole. But they're also extremely powerful greenhouse gases, and so there's actually quite a big chance that if there is some kind of a extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there, it might be using these particular chemicals for their own use. And detecting them would be potentially possible with James Webb Telescope by looking at an extremely specific frequency. It would look very similar to that red edge I mentioned before, but would produce observations that would potentially look like this. 
with the wavelength resembling this right here for just one of these chlorofluorocarbons. And so detecting this around some kind of a distant planet would be an extremely interesting sign and would be very difficult to explain in a non-technological way. It would suggest to us that somewhere out there there's probably another alien species that is having the same troubles with the pollution, potentially their own version of the ozone hole, or maybe they're using it for, well, basically warming up, because it's a greenhouse gas. But unfortunately in this case it would only work with dimmer stars, such as a typical red dwarf or M-type star. It would not work with stars like our sun, because they are just too bright and it would most likely produce a lot of other observations that can sort of wash out a lot of data. And so by focusing on stars like the TRAPPIST-1 system that already has 7 confirmed planets, or even the nearby Proxima Centauri, we could maybe detect something there. But unfortunately when it comes to stars similar to our sun, there is still no good proposition or good idea. But anyway, these are still extremely interesting studies, and once the James Webb telescope becomes operational, it will be very interesting to see what the scientists do discover. Although for now, I guess I'm going to still stick to my opinion that well, it looks like we kind of might be sort of alone. It does look like there is just nothing going on around us and no one is trying to talk to us. And also maybe just maybe intelligence is extremely rare. And we'll discuss this in one of the future videos because I'm going to be making this into a kind of a mini-series in regards to search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And so until future videos, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.